Hello, my name is Lowell Vanderpool and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. We're going to be looking at learning laptop hardware for the A-plus exam, but most importantly, focusing on those practical skills that IT student needs for their job. Let's take a look at CompTIA Objective 1.1. Let's look at the objective. Given a scenario, install, configure laptop hardware and components. We want to, in this presentation, to make sure you have as much information as you can to do this skill, to do it the first day on the job if you were required to do it. Yes, Yes, we want to pass the A-plus exam, but more importantly, we want you effective day one on the job. There are lots of things that can help you learn any kind of equipment. YouTube videos can be helpful. I'm hoping my YouTube video will be helpful. The manuals from vendor websites are a great source of accurate information. Great way is use the vendor websites. They have great information, but most important, it's accurate. Vendor videos can be very, very helpful as you learn any kind of equipment. And then of course, hands-on. You know, you can purchase a used or refurbished laptop or get a friend to give you one that's sitting in their closet that they haven't used in two or three years and use those as an opportunity to gain hands-on skills. Let's look at adding memory modules into a laptop. These are going to be SODIMs. SODIMs are what we use in laptops. You can see that we're inserting it at an angle. There's a alignment pin you see marked in yellow and we're putting those gold contacts firmly in the socket and then pressing down and allowing it to lock into place. We'll watch the second one go in, again, at an angle, locking gently down, and it clips in place. How do I get experience as a student and I wanna get into the IT field? Well, one way is to get experience from free work that you can do for family or friends. Make sure that if you do that, make sure you clearly explain that you're learning. You're, and because of that, you're inexperienced. You could potentially damage their equipment. You don't know everything. You don't have a lot of experience. That can happen. On the same token, when you do work for family or friends, make sure that you really work carefully, systematically, use as much information as you can while you do it because your reputation is on the line. Now, that's not the only way you can get experience, but that for a lot of students, this is one way you can start getting experience now, even though you've never had a job in IT. So let's look at removing a wireless LAN card. We're gonna first remove the back cover and disable the battery. And we're gonna lift the cover off the wireless LAN card. If you'll notice, there's an aluminum plate on the other side that he has his finger on. That provides RFI shielding. We're gonna use a nylon spludger to pop those two coax cables. Those are actually coax cables off the connectors so that we can access the wireless LAN card. We're going to unscrew the screw that holds a M.2-like connector for this printed circuit board. And then gently at an angle, we'll remove the printed circuit board that has the wireless LAN card. If you're a student and you're trying to get into the IT field, make sure you learn safety. Make sure you learn electrical safety, about powering off, removing batteries, what are the company's policy on battery disposal, learn personal safety, learn equipment safety. You don't wanna damage equipment the, the first week on the job. Don't brush away safety because it's not an exciting subject. Learn the fundamentals of safety in the IT field. Common sense goes a long ways. You do need a natural inclination for logical thinking 
thinking in this field. Common sense can be a real helpful attribute in successfully working in information technology. Look at this caution that's in a Lenovo manual. It said make sure that all screws and springs and small parts are properly in place and not left loose in the computer. And, and if you can verify this by shaking the computer or laptop after you're done working on it, and if you hear anything rattling, take it apart. You got trouble. All electronics in IT equipment today is microelectronics, from laptops to massive routers. It doesn't matter. They're all using microelectronics. So when you disconnect a cable, you pull on a connector. It's important that you know how to do that properly. Connectors are fragile. Without a conscientious effort to remove and replace with care, damage can happen. Anytime you work on equipment, make sure that the data, the critical data on that device is backed up. This is going to be very important in the enterprise. You do not want to lose your boss's email or you don't want to lose critical data on anyone's PC or laptop. Learn backup strategies for your company. If you are working independently on your own, make sure you back up that person's data. Let's replace a keyboard laptop. Take your keyboard face down on the palm rest. We're going to take the trackpad cable and the data cable and place it into the connector. Let's watch this again. As he slides in the flexible cable in the connector, he flips a black plastic pressure plate down, forcing the cable into the connector pins. He's going to do it again. And notice the struggle of trying to get this flexible cable into the socket deep enough. Make sure you get it all the way in, then flip the pressure plate down. Now we're going to flip the keyboard over. And notice he slides it up towards the top. Then using his hands, he slides it towards the keyboard, towards him. That locks the laptop both at the top and the bottom of the keyboard slot. He's going to use two screws to lock the keyboard in, put in his pads, flip the laptop over. Some laptops have a screw that locks the keyboard in place on the back cover. Now in the world of laptops, these are big items that cause problems with laptops that you're going to work on. One is liquid spills, coffee, Coke, milk, it doesn't matter. It's all dumped inside the laptop accidentally. But if the computer is on, laptop is running and you spill your coffee inside, you're probably going to short out components and you're going to make a mess of the keyboard. People also drop their laptops. They don't do it deliberately. They just have it in their hand and it slips out and you'll see broken corners, cracked plastic. You'll see a hard drive that's really noisy and chattering if they have a spindle drive. Another component of a laptop that takes a lot of human brutality is the power jack. People plug in their power jacks, they rip it out, they jam it in, and over time the power jack can get damaged. Those three items in the real world, spills, drops, and power jack. Big problems in laptops. Many well-intentioned folks will allow a friend or family member to fix their laptop. When I see screws like this that you see in this photo, I know I'm dealing with a very inexperienced technician or someone that doesn't know what they're doing at all. That's a big indicator that somebody's been inside this device that doesn't know what they're doing. That could cause more problems than it ever solved. Let's replace the CPU heat sink, the heat pipe, and the fan assembly on a laptop. Be sure to remove the old thermal paste on your CPU and put new thermal paste before you put this heat sink on. Make sure you plug the CPU fan back into the system board. My best recommendation for students who are trying to get the hands-on and practical experience is whatever hardware you are learning, download the manuals. Manuals are free. You can go to Lenovo's HP Dell's website and download the latest, greatest piece of equipment that is being sold to the enterprise today. You can download that manual and look at how they suggest to repair. This is a great education. It's free. It just takes some time to do it. Learn to speed read. 
If you are less experienced, then read more slowly. Learn to browse important sections of a hardware manual, looking for safety, tips, critical information. Look at how they recommend you disassemble and put things back together. These are great and very important steps in your education. Two critical terms you need to know is FRU, field replaceable units. These are typically done by IT professionals and warranty centers. And then CRUs, customer replaceable units. These could be more self-service modules, such as replacing memory. When it comes to tools, laptops absolutely demand you have the right tools. If you don't want photos like you just saw a few minutes ago with that messed up screw, you have to have the right tools. You can go to ifixit.com and take a look at their selection. They have a great selection of tools, especially for mobile devices and laptops. For the IT students to begin to learn tools, notice these Phillips heads. You may be familiar with a Phillips screwdriver and a Phillips head, but if you don't understand what is a 000 Phillips and how that differs from a zero Phillips and a one Phillips, you're going to strip out screws and heads. When you're dealing with laptops and mobile devices, you understand the size of your Phillips head before you begin taking out that screw. We're going to remove the system board on this laptop and I want you to pay attention to the small and delicate connectors that we have to deal with in order to successfully do this. Here removing the connector for the CMOS battery. Here's an example of using tweezers. Here we're disconnecting the trackpad. Notice we're using the nylon spludger to carefully remove without damage. Next we're going to remove the keyboard connector and notice we're going to remove that black pressure plate and remove the flexible cable. Next we have two speaker cables that we're going to remove. We're now going to remove the wireless LAN card cables from their guide. Now gently with a nylon spludger we're going to remove the coax cables from the wireless LAN card. Now we're disconnecting a camera cable, gently lifting up on the pressure plate and removing the flexible cable to the power button. Next we're going to remove the LCD cable connector. Make sure you remove all the screws that hold the system board in place. These circuit boards are very thin. The printed circuit boards are thin and you can damage them if you flex them too much. Reinsert the new circuit board. Go ahead and put back the screws that you removed in the system board. Carefully put the LCD cable back into its guided tray and connect the LCD connector. Connect the power and fingerprint cable connector back onto the system board. Connect the camera cable. Secure the wireless LAN cards, coax cables back onto the connectors. Notice the use of a spludger and tweezers to do this gently and carefully. Put the wireless cables back into their guide Connect both speaker cables. Connect the keyboard assembly cable. Connect your trackpad and NFC cable. Return your CMOS connector back into the main system board. Now this picture shows you many of the tamper-proof screw heads that are available to manufacturers. The manufacturer is attempting to prevent the common ordinary person from trying to repair something in their laptop or in their microwave oven or in their mobile phone without training. Could be extremely dangerous if they did try to repair something like a microwave oven or they just simply don't want you to repair in the case of a mobile device or a laptop. 
Today on Amazon, you can buy almost any one of these tamper-proof drivers for almost any type of tamper-proof screw. Now there are security screws. These are made by specific manufacturers and you will not find any Chinese copied version of these drivers and screws except via the manufacturer. And they basically keep you out of that equipment if they use these type of screws. Another indispensable tool in laptops and mobile devices is nylon carbon fiber spludgers. They're basically pry tools with sharp flat surfaces, sometimes pointed surfaces. They use nylon or carbon fiber and allow you to work with plastic parts without damaging them. I'll demonstrate how to use these tools. We're going to remove now a two and a half inch hard drive from this laptop. Notice the spludger carefully removing the SATA data cable. Most of these two and a half inch sizes are going to be SATA. Notice these drives typically have an enclosure. This one has a connector that we're going to have to remove. Most two and a half inch hard drives are either spindle or solid state. And notice this special enclosure that goes around the two and a half inch hard drive that has to be removed and a new hard drive added. Now we've got our M.2. This is a short version of the M.2. We're going to remove the screws. Gently lift it. And pull the solid state hard drive out of its socket. This is a full length M.2 solid state hard drive. And again, just gently pull it out of the M.2 socket. If you're reassembling laptops and you've taken things apart, how tight do you tighten the screws? Well, if you're talking about screws that are going from plastic to plastic, then you want to flush the head of the screw with the plastic and then turn an additional 90 degrees. That should give you sufficient tightness so they won't come loose and it won't crack the plastic. If you're dealing with logic cards and plastic, tighten them all the way down to the head is flush and then 180 degrees should be sufficient to tighten it without damaging components. Replacing LCD panels is a common replacement for the IT Pro. They get damaged, they get broken, and so you have to be very careful. These are probably one of the more challenging components to replace because experience really helps here. Here we're inserting the screws for the main hinges. This is one of the strongest elements of your laptop. If you'll notice, the screws have a slight blue color adhesive around the threads. This prevents the screws from backing out during opening and closing of, of the LCD panel. Now we'll install the antenna wires through their guides on the main board. Here we're looking at the steel brace and hinge assembly for a Lenovo LCD display. One of the reasons I really like Lenovo's as a laptop product is that they build great engineering into their products. That steel stiffener that's behind the LCD panel allows the LCD display to be lifted up and down and up and down without breakage or crack. This is a great feature that a lot of laptop manufacturers don't do a good job on. Marring up the plastic frames of the laptops is not a good idea. There's lots of great tools that will prevent you doing that. There's the plastic triangles. I prefer guitar picks. You can go to a music shop and get a variety of guitar picks with different types of flexibility and stiffness. You can buy these plastic triangles. They're helpful. They prevent you from marring up the plastic frame as you're working, popping it open. This is a pry tool that you can also use. These are all available online. They're very effective in getting devices open without marring up the plastic frames. Also, micro tweezers are very helpful in working with tiny connectors, both removing them and reinserting them and messing with cables. So always get a micro tweezer. They're super handy.
In the enterprise space, many computers and laptops have what is known as a UUID, a Universal Unique Identifier. It's a 128-bit number uniquely assigned to your computer upon production, and it's stored in the EEPROM of your system board. The algorithm that generates the number is designed to provide a unique ID until the year AD 3400. No two computers in the world have the same UUID. Sometimes when you replace a system board, you may have to create a new UUID for that system board because it may have come off production as a spare part and does not have a UUID. Your UUID can be visible two ways. There's a command line using the WMIC command that can pull that information up. And I also put PowerShell. So if you want to take a look at your UUID of your device, this is the way you would do it. Another problem with enterprise users is they take home their laptops and they put them on the couch, they put them on a pillow, something that's comfortable to them, and they don't realize they're blocking the air vents that the device uses to vent air and cool the device. And they literally cook the laptop. This is typical vents on the bottom of a laptop. They have to be free to allow airflow. Most of that air is vented through the CPU and sometimes through the video card as well. And if those are blocked, you overheat the laptop. If you're new to Tech Savvy Productions channel, I encourage you, if you're a new student, check us out. There's a rich set of videos under the video description or links to our notes, PowerPoint slides. You'll see our website. You can also check out our website for more and more resources for your A+, Net+, and Security+, exams. This is one of our videos that we have in our library that's called Upgrading Laptops. You can just simply search for it on our channel and it will give you more visual step-by-steps how to tear down, upgrade, and put back together properly laptops. We also create subtitles in 29 languages, so if English is not your first language, check out our subtitles. It might help you better understand our training material. Here is our social media links. You can also connect us via email. We welcome your membership to our channel. Also on our website, we will be adding more and more A+, Net+, and Security+, resources that are all free. The easiest way to support us is simply subscribe.